Also, I'm running a improvised antenna off of a twig with a binding post and a little bit of wire tape to the top. So surprise, this HT is working. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm going to start a new series called Improvised Field Comms. I'm about two and a quarter miles into a trek. We're going to do something fun today. So just like the No Random Contact series, the plan for this series is to improvise comms gear in the field using the equipment we have to make the best of a bad situation. So we're gonna start with the objective, the exercise, and then the after action report when we get back to the shack. So the goal for today is to simulate a failure of my HT where either I lose my rubber duck antenna or it breaks. And we're going to build a two meter quarter way vertical out in the field. And to make things fun, I actually came out here and there's a peak behind me. It's Apache Butte and we're going to try to do a summits on the air activation on figures 144.410. So stick around for this, it's gonna be a real good time. Um, I was supposed to have four and a quarter miles, but I'm not gonna take the trail. Uh, looks like right behind me, I can bushwhack and probably cut close to a mile. So should be fun, we'll get up there, we'll do the build and then hopefully get on the air. All right, folks, apologies about the wind noise. I'm gonna make this quick. I made a mistake uh, bushwhacking. There were a couple of false summits. I should have checked my map. Anyways, made it here in about an hour and three minutes. Uh, did a little over a thousand feet of gain in that last mile. Uh, we came from the uh, northern direction over there. This is Whiskey 7 Alpha Stroke Mike November 095. And we're going to improvise a field antenna. Uh, to start, we're going to pretend that uh, this antenna is snapped off. And uh, we're gonna take whatever uh, brace we can here to improvise a rigid structure for our field antenna. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of Palo Verde for two meter quarter wave antenna. That's roughly 19 inches. I actually realized that the length from my elbow to the tip of my middle finger is almost exactly 19 inches. So I'm gonna use that as a measuring tape. We'll uh, go ahead, set up, and talk a bit more about it, then activate this peak. All right, guys, apologies about the angle. I do this myself, also for the wind noise, but I guess content is king. If I miss anything, we'll talk about it in the after action report. So here's my Yesu VX6R. We're going to pretend that the antenna snapped off. And like I said, I'm looking for a, a brace that's about 19 inches long. I found uh, this guy right here, and we're gonna go ahead and affix it to the uh, body of the HT. Now the big question is how are we going to uh, attach an antenna? Well I always carry these little mint tins, uh, sometimes I carry the larger Altoids tins, but this is my HT uh, field kit and really there's only a couple pieces of uh, things needed. Got a little bit of 26 gauge wire here. Uh, like I said, if I needed to measure this in the field, I would go from the bottom of my elbow to the top of my middle finger and then strip off a little bit of installation about an inch long on the end. And then I also always carry with me um, a Cobra head. These are BNC binding posts and I prefer the ones that are the uh, BNC female for the HTs. And then as most of you guys know, I tend to uh, favor BNC connections for everything. So I always have these SMA to BNC connectors. They're a little bit different depending if you have the Chinese radios versus the Japanese radios. I'll put links down below to everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take our SMA to BNC adapter. And I think the easiest thing to do here is to um, connect it to the, um, we want our wire connected to the center uh, insulator. Uh, I did use my voltmeter and uh, test continuity. So for me, it's going to be the black side and we're just going to stretch out our cable. The other thing I like to do, oh, and we're doing this in one take guys for better or for worse. I always keep electrical tape. This is actually some pretty old stuff. So I'm just going to take a little bit off here. And sometimes my first aid kit has it too. We'll take our copper wire and I'm probably gonna do a video in the, in the future where we're gonna try to find some wire in the field. So uh, let's go ahead and thread this through. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, don't have a soldering gun here. And I'm gonna ratchet that, that down real tight. 
All right, so now we have roughly a 19 inch connector. Uh, the other side, we could actually do another 19 inch run and do a counterpoise, it would give us better performance. I'm not gonna do that because I don't know if all of this footage is gonna survive, but I have a little bit extra wire to do that. We'll clip this guy on here. I had a rubber band somewhere, and I actually found it pretty useful to uh, use a rubber band to hold the tin together. And we're gonna use this to basically allow us to have some structure for when I'm holding the, the HT. And then what I found last night when kind of doing a dry run, we'll just go ahead and take this section here, take a little bit of tape. Uh, heck, you could even use a Band-Aid from your first aid kit if you don't have anything or a little bit of cordage. So guys, this is going to be the station that we're going to use to activate the peak. You know, like 20 years ago or so. These guys always uh, rag chew on our soda frequency. It's stuff, nice and comfy in their shacks. You know, I'm going to see if I can break in here in a second with uh, Mr. Janky HT. KT7, are you on? Every time. Well, in an emergency, hopefully they would have been able to come back to me. Try to break in again. KT7, are you in? Are you in? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm activating a peak. Do you guys mind if I go real quick on this frequency? Uh, you can go real slow. We're just shooting a breeze. You're 5'9 uh, in the northern section of Sun City. Very good. Yeah, the call here is Kilo Tango 7, Romeo Uniform, November. I'm activating uh, Whiskey 7. Alpha Stroke Mike November 095 Apache Butte, and you're a 59 out of New River, Arizona. Great signal. Also, I'm running a improvised antenna off of a twig with a binding post and a little bit of wire taped to the top. So, surprise, this HT is working. Yeah, you're doing very good here. Uh, so, uh, there you we go. did it. Calls Kilowatt 7 Japan Echo. Uh, good luck. Summit to summit. We'll copy here, Alan. Summit to summit. Summit to summit, go ahead. Yeah, summit to summit. I didn't get your call. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just just got up on the hill here. WA7JTM, WA7 John Thomas Mary. And, my, and I'm on Yankee Victor uh, 150. Yankee Victor 150, over. Roger, Roger. You're solid 59 out of Whiskey 7 Alpha Stroke Mike November 095. The call here is KT7 RUN. Great signal. Yeah, Roger. We're up, uh, up in the uh, foothills of the Bradshaws here, but you're in great shape. Okay, I'll carry on. I'll uh, work together. I'm setting up HF. I'll come back over here. So carry on. WA7JTM, thanks for the summit to summit. My pleasure. QRZ? This is rocking it, guys. Like I said, we're going to talk about everything in the after action report back at the shack. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, switch over to a different frequency, uh, 144 decimal no, 146 decimal 520, the two meter calling frequency, and we'll see if I can get anybody. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Tango 7, Romeo, Uniform November. I'm on Apache Butte trying to get one more contact so that I can activate this peak. Are there any stations that are willing to come back to me with the signal report? Again, the call here is Kilo Tango 7, Romeo, Uniform November. We'll see how. Kilo 7, Delta Yankee in South Phoenix. You have a beautiful signal, sir. Uh, solid 5.9. I'm over on Apache Butte in uh, New River. A little bit of noise, but you're entirely readable and a strong signal. All right. Thanks for the contact and have a wonderful morning. Thank you for helping me activate this peak. Guys, we did it. So let me know in the comments down below if you like these, uh, this new series. I'm calling it uh, Improvised field comps. We're going to do field antennas. We're going to simulate breakage like this. Should be a good time. Uh, I'm going to pack up my gear, maybe have a cup of coffee actually, and uh, we'll figure out if we'll do the after action report uh, back at the house or up here. Cheers guys. All right, so let's jump straight into an after action report. Obviously the whole exercise was a success and it did blow my mind how well it worked. I actually did that improvised build in real time, did not edit anything. It took about two minutes and that was the first and only take I did. 
we did establish contact with uh, between five and six different parties within about a four minute period. And the range in terms of those contacts were about 20 miles on the low end and about 32 on the high end. Almost all the reports were 5.9 with the exception of one. Uh, I believe it was the, uh, the last station I did on my alternate frequency, which was the a two meter nationwide calling uh, simplex frequency. And he basically still said that I was communication grade. Now, I'm not gonna say that there was a fail, but um, one thing a couple of astute uh, viewers on my other platforms uh, noticed was that I actually had the wire connected to the black terminal lug. And let me explain why that happened in my particular case. When I received the Cobra head uh, connector from the vendor on Amazon maybe a year ago, the caps were actually reversed. This so I actually did take out my voltmeter and do a continuity test where I put a probe on the center pin and uh, on the side where I had connected the wire and it showed that it was a continuous closed circuit. Only difference is in general practice, the uh, radiating element is typically demarcated by red. So uh, after this exercise, I went ahead and made sure that I put the, the red lug on the actual hot side that goes to the center conductor. Uh, the other thing a lot of people commented on, technically this is what I use for building dipoles for HF. So we could have taken another section of um, 19 inch wire and connected it to this portion so we would have had the radiating element going up affixed to our twig and then basically had the other half of the antenna which would have given us better performance but in this case really everybody said that I had very clear reports. So let's jump really quickly into uh, the kit one more time. So I used a Yesu VX6R this is my standard carry and like I said the trick to doing a repair like this in the field is to have your repair materials with you in advance. There's other ways we could actually have done this. We'll leave that for probably a later video. So the first thing I like to keep is something that takes me from SMA to BNC. This is a BNC uh, female to SMA male. And if you have a uh, Baofeng radio, this connector is actually a bit different. I'll put links down below to both, but in the case of the Baofeng, for example, the Baofeng kit has a um, SMA a female, or sorry, B and C a female to SMA female because the pin on the uh, Baofeng is actually on the radio housing. So either way, at this point now, whether it's my man pack or these radios, we have the ability to use B and C with a Cobra head. So really cool stuff. In terms of wire, get whatever wire you have. Uh, I can't even recall where I got this. It's, I think, 26 gauge wire from Wireman. It's good stuff, uh, but I've also had good luck with uh, silicone wire. I'll put that one down below because that's typically what I use for my um, dipole builds and I've had good luck since it doesn't kink. So this is really the core pieces that we needed plus the B and C to SMA adapter. There are a couple of other things I like to keep in my kit and one of them is a, a B and C female to female uh, adapter and this is so that I can add the adapter here and then directly connect my RG316 coax directly to it. And that's typically how I run my HF dipoles when using this. One other piece of gear we did not cover, but is always in my little kit here. Uh, I like to carry for each type of radio a uh, SO239 to again SMA. And depending on whether you're running something like a Yesu, a Japanese radio, versus a Baofeng, these will be different. But the point is that out of both radios, I'm standardizing either on the SO239 connector or the uh, BNC connector. So fantastic stuff. Anyways, you guys kind of get the point that um, in order to pull this exercise off, you need to have a little bit of kit and know how you can actually use it. Uh, one thing that I did not fail to mention in the, the actual video was in the field, I measured from the bottom of my elbow to the tip of my finger. It's about 19 inches. Uh, the wire probably closer to 20 because you do have to thread it through the, um, the terminal, kind of wrap it around. 
and still even that is a guesstimate on 19 inches. So people are asking, what do you do about your SWR measurements? Well, in the field, I don't bring an SWR meter in general, so I have no way of knowing. So for that exercise, another huge win, I backed down the power to half the power of this rig. This is a five watt uh, tri-bander, but I ran it at 2.5 watts just in case. I did not want to cause any issues since I did, know, did not know the SWR in advance. So anyways, uh, one thing I do wanna mention before we part here is I am planning on drawing from a couple of resources uh, for this series. I did not invent any of this. The notion of using these Cobra heads is well known particularly in the military space. So I am drawing from several US uh, military uh, field manuals and technical manuals on this usage. Uh, there is a, another site that I want to explore more that does a lot of improvised field equipment, and that is N6CC, november 6 charliecharliecom and uh, I want to go through and pour through all of that material. This is a prior serviceman who has way more information and experience than I do. So we're going to be testing a lot of that stuff. And the last thing I'm going to mention is there is one piece of item that I'd like to add to this kit, and it's probably an alligator clip. Uh, in the next video or one of the videos in this series, I plan to uh, attach a piece of wire and an alligator clip to something like a fence post or another piece of wire and we'll improvise probably some um, some work on hf for example so with that said i want to thank everybody on the uh, buy me a coffee the memberships for supporting everything i'm doing we're doing a live stream tonight just for the members uh, all the supporters will be getting uh, ad free access to this video and all the videos so i've got a couple of different levels for uh, either the one-time supporters or the month over month members can't do what I'm trying to do uh, without all of your support. So thank you so much. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. This is KT7RUN. Last call for anybody who wants to work Apache Butte. You don't happen to have 1296 up there, do you? Negative, just the HT on 2 meter FM. Okay, QSI, this check and just an error. Well, thanks a lot. I'm real surprised to work anybody summit to summit here, so that's pretty cool.